elected to defer. They're going to let Iowa take the ball first. Well, teams that believe they have a pretty good defense like to get their defense on the field early on to establish an emotional high. And if they can do that, they figure that they're well on their way to a good start. And standing deep for the Iowa Hawkeyes will be Tim Dwight and Tavian Banks. Dwight will wear number six, Banks number 22. And Chris Gardner kicks it off, and we're underway. It's a short kick. Dwight to the 21-yard line. The quarterback for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Matt Sherman, the 22-year-old junior who has completed nearly two-thirds of his passes, thrown the three touchdowns, hasn't been picked off yet. The Wheaties starting lineups are brought to you by Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, and his favorite running back, for good reason, Cedric Shaw, who carried the ball 42 times for 250 yards last season against Michigan State. Largely behind big left tackle Ross Verba, 285-pound senior. Along with Shaw, they are the offensive co-captains, and this is the first play of the game. Shaw and Berger in the I formation. Out to the flat, intended for Demo Odom. Now the Michigan State defense. You'll see a lot of Chris Smith, number 96, fifth-year senior, two and a half sacks this season. But the guy who's going to really mean a lot to Michigan State today, the return of the linebacker Reggie Garnett, missed the past two games with a knee. He figures to be 100% today in the secondary, anchored by strong safety Marvin Wright, the senior from Saginaw, Michigan. It is second down and 10. Flemister, the tight end, was in motion. Now the pitch out. Cedric Shaw gets across the 25 to the 26. Ray Hill, the cornerback, came up to make the tackle. So it'll be third down, about four yards to go. You know, Iowa came out and threw on first down, and then in second down, they wanted to get back to their rushing offense, and Michigan State was right there, and they're happy to have Garnett back in the middle of the defense for Michigan State. Third down. And about five. Shaw and Berger are split behind the quarterback, Matt Sherman, who is now calling an audible. A lot of time. Throwing long for Dwight, and it's nearly intercepted. Campbell, well, Campbell, the left cornerback, on the play. Well, Shaw got man-to-man -man coverage, and he went with the audible, and he tried to go to Sherman that time, I'm sorry, to right out there on the right side. And really, he had Odom's open on the left side, but he doesn't go to him. You see good coverage in the middle there by Garnett. And Sherman just isn't able to get the ball out there. Campbell almost came up with the pick. On fourth down, Nick Gallery with the punt. It's going to be returned across the 45 by Marvin Wright, a reserve wide receiver. A 44-yard punt, a five-yard return. Now the Wheaties starting lineup is brought to you by Wheaties at Breakfast of Champions. The quarterback, Bill Burke, and he is going to be throwing a lot to Derek Mason. Nate, uh, Nick Saban, the head coach, wants to see him get the ball at least 10 times. The offensive line anchored by Matt Beard, 275-pound senior. Out of the I formation, first and 10, Michigan State with terrific field position at their own 47. The handoff to Goldberg. And Goldburn gets out of bounds inside Iowa territory at the 43. Knocked out of bounds by Plez Atkins, the right quarterback. And now the Iowa defense, the five-man defensive line. Watch this guy, fifth-year senior Bill Ennis Inge. He already has four and a half sacks. He's big, he's tall, he's quick. And two linebackers, Rollins and Hughes, they lead Michigan, or rather Iowa, in tackles. And the free safety, Damian Robinson, has one interception in each of the past two games. Second down and one. And that's going to be a first down for Dwayne Goldburn. Uh, Michigan State doing a very good job early on running the football you know, right up the middle and also bouncing it outside. This time you're going to see a good pulling block up here by the left guard, Scott Shaw. He's going to come right up, right here, going to pull around and trap. 
There you see him pulling into the hole, and Goldburn does a nice job of getting right in behind it, picking up the first down, Charlie. Michigan State on the move at the 39 of Iowa. Just underway, and the quarterback, Richard freshman Bill Burke, doesn't like what he sees, so he calls a timeout. No score, first quarter. State Nick Saban opting to defer and give Iowa the ball even though Michigan State won the toss and they've got the advantage in field position early on. He's looking like a genius with that decision right now. The team is ready to move in for a score. First and 10 at the Iowa 39. The left-handed Burke throwing off the back foot incomplete intended for the tight end Josh Kerr. Second down. Remember we talked about Burke, how in warm-up see last week he had trouble completing passes, a little bit nervous. Well, he seems to be a little bit nervous here. You know, as a trap player earlier, they pull the guard out. He's got plenty of time, good blocking, but he gets this ball up a little bit high for his tight end, a little bit difficult. Should have been caught, but that ball needs to be put out in front of the tight end so he can catch it and run with it. Hey, you see his numbers from last week. 9 of 28. His first seven passes were incomplete last week, Charlie. Second and 10 at the Iowa 39 with Nigeria Carter in motion. Throwing for Carter. Tipped incomplete. That was also a pass that could have been thrown better and probably should have been caught. Well, the problem there was that he waited a little bit too long. And I, I think he is trying to calm himself down because he gets a little bit jittery at the start of ball game. He had his receiver right away. Carter was out there, but he took too long to get the ball to him, and then he forced it a little bit late. Burke, a redshirt freshman from Warren, Ohio. Third and ten. Michigan State hasn't been all that successful on third down. Goldburn is the single setback. And Jared DeVries, the big left tackle out of Arlington, Iowa, jumped the gun. Hit ball, offered by defense. Five yard penalty. That, that is referee Jack Teets. Of course, this is a Big Ten crew. So Michigan State gets five easy yards, third down and five. Well, that changes things, Charlie, because now with the third and five, you don't necessarily have to throw the ball. You're in two down territory. You can run twice if you feel comfortable with it. Mason and Carter are flanked way out to the right. Third and five at the 34 of Iowa. Over the middle and it is complete to Nigeria Carter for a first down and he is down at the 21 yard line. Well, Nigeria Carter has been a big receiver the last couple of weeks because of the injury to the other receiver. You'll see him right there. He's just going to do a little drag across and you'll see the quarterback drop back, take his time, get a good throwing lane and get the ball in there. And again, with Derek Mason nursing a bad wrist, Nigeria Carter has been so important. Just runs a drag against man coverage, does a good job of catching the ball across the middle, picking up the first down. That is Carter flank way out to the top of the screen. And Cedric Irvin and Gilburn are in the backfield. Little play action. Throwing for the end zone, wide open, touchdown! Nigeria Carter from Bill Burke, and Michigan State strikes first. Well, if you want to know why Burke is the quarterback on this team right now, that is the reason. You saw some athletic ability on his part. He was able to improvise after the play broke down, and he was able to come up with the touchdown pass. Gus Orenstein had been the backup quarterback, but now Burke has taken over. Nigeria Carter from Coconut Creek, Florida. And now the extra point for Chris Gardner. Seven to nothing. And Michigan State comes up big on a 22-yard touchdown pass from the left-handed Bill Burke to Nigeria Carter. And the Spartans strike first and lead seven to nothing.
their first series and Michigan marches six plays and 52 yards in just a minute and seven seconds and the Spartans on the 22 yard touchdown pass from Bill Burke and Igea Carter have the early seven and other lead now Iowa tries again but this kick is far too deep and Iowa will take over first and ten on the touchback of their own 20. But watch the matchup up here. This is where Carter is, and he's going against Carter. Carter against Ryan. I'm sorry. When you see him come out of here, he'll run this route here, and the defensive back, when he gets back, he's going to look back at the quarterback. And when you're in man-to-man -man coverage, you can't look back at the quarterback. Now watch number eight, Knight. He's the corner. Now he's running with Carter. Now he looks back. Freeze it there. He's looking back, and now he's looking back at the quarterback. Can't do that. When you look back at the quarterback, you're going to lose your man every time. And he lost him by five yards, and that's the quarterback, redshirt freshman Bill Burke, who is the starter now with Todd Schultz, the regular quarterback, out for three weeks with a bad knee. And so Burke has done his job early. First and ten at the 20, and Iowa looks confused as Sherman is calling an audible. Completes it to Demo Odoms to the 28-yard line. A pickup of eight on the play, second and two. Well, obviously, Charlie, Iowa feels that they have to throw the ball on first down to loosen up the Michigan State defense before they turn Tavian Banks and Cedric Shaw loose on the running game. Remember, Cedric Shaw carried for 250 yards on 42 carries last year up in East Lansing. And there is the ageless wonder, Hayden Fry, 67 years young. Here's Shaw, looking for room, and has none. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and he is brought down in a heap. Well, you know, Robert they got him. Newkirk was in on the play. But well, Newkirk and others, and Wright was there as well, 18. They got Shaw going sideways. When you can make a slashing runner run parallel to the line of scrimmage. Look at him. He's going sideways. Now it's too late. They've surrounded him. They've got the inside flow coming over to make the play. Great job of gang tackling by Michigan State. Third and about a yard and a half at the 29. And again. Another automatic. They're going to throw for it quickly and in and out of the hands of the tight end Zarin Flemister. He was open, should have had it. Well, Sherman, Sherman Shaw, I'm sorry, uh, Matt Sherman, we call him Sherman Shaw. Uh, Matt Sherman saw the man to man coverage, and that's why he audibleized at the line of scrimmage and got the man he wanted. Flemister was open, he just dropped the ball. So Nick Gallery. 6'4 and 240 pounds. He's the Iowa punter. And it's a low kick. Fielded on the fly by Derek Mason. And Mason brings it across the 50 to the 47-yard line. Now let's go to Mike Gleason. Mike. All right, Charlie, Minnesota on the road in West Lafayette today. Minnesota's quarterback, Terry Sauter, picked off by Derek Brown on the deflection. Only a second interception all season with Brown. With a lot of green in front of him. Brown goes 55 yards the other way for the touchdown. And Purdue on the board early, 7-0 over Minnesota. Let's go back to Charlie and Rodney in Iowa City. And Michigan State with the ball, first and 10 at the 47-yard line of Iowa. The ball and the lead. This is not exactly how the Hawkeyes had their homecoming victory. Good job. Cedric Irvin, Michael's cousin, picks up about four yards on the play. Now let's take a look at the Amico Big Ten leaders. Amico, you expect more from a leader for all-purpose yardage? Two of the top eight here today. Tavian Banks of Iowa averaging a little more than 131 yards of all-purpose yardage. And Derek Mason, who you just saw on the punt return at 124. And there is Mason flanked out to the right side. Second and six. Out of the backfield, it is complete to Gary Gould, primarily a blocking back. But he picks up the yardage for a first down. Picked up nine on the play. And he got a nice block out there by Nigeria Carter, the wide receiver who really took out one of the defensive backs, which allowed Gould to pick up, I think, the first down. 
Watch, you'll see him just float on out there to the right side, going to wait for Burke to come with the pass. Now watch the block right here by Carter. Right there, that's a nice block, and that allows Gould to go one-on-one -on -one and pick up the first down. And Gould is now the single setback. Correction, Cedric Irvin. Irvin the setback, and Irvin's got the ball. He gets nothing, maybe a yard. Kerry Cooks, the strong safety, came up to make the play, number 15. Well, Cooks is a big hitter. He knows how to fill the hole here. You'll see him up tight. He'll show up in your picture right now. See that big hole? Well, not anymore. Cooks came right on up in there and just shut it down. The young man from Irving, Texas. One of several Texas players on this Iowa team. Iowa has 17 players from the state of Texas, and 11 of them are on the defensive side of the ball. Well, Cooks carries a tattoo called Southern Way on his shoulder. Remind him that Texas football is a little bit different than Big Ten football, and Southern cooking is good for him. Second and nine. Gould and Goldburn are split in the backfield. Here's a toss from Burke, and it's nearly picked off. The intended receiver was Josh Kerr. And Damian Robinson nearly had the pick. Damian Robinson has had an interception in each of the past two weeks. He nearly had the hat trick. Well, he shouldn't drop this one. It's thrown right to him. But he gets distracted a little bit by the ball going over the tight end. Josh Kerr's hands may have uh, disrupted his vision just a wee bit. But he's got to pick that one off. When you have a cornerback coming on a blitz and you get the quarterback to throw the ball high, you've got to get the pick. It is third down. This is the loudest this crowd has been today, 70,000 plus. Dwayne Goldborn is short of the first down by about three yards. Well, unless you have a field goal kicker that you have the absolute most confidence in that can nail this field goal, I think you need to go for it here. This is going to be about a 45-yard attempt. If you get it, you're up by 10 points. But if you can't nail this thing, I think with a third, fourth and short here, you need to go for it. That is Chris Gardner, who is 7 of 10 this year. His longest is 48. This is from 45. And it's 10-0 Michigan State. The Spartans are on the board. They have scored twice in each of their first two possessions. Well, Nick Saban obviously made the right call there. He had the utmost confidence in his kicker. He knew he could nail it from 45 yards out, and he came with it, and that puts his team up 10-0. This thing looks like it would have been good by another five yards or so, Charlie. Look at how much height he gets on that ball, and it gets all the way through. Hooked it home. You think he likes it? He knew it was good right from the start. And so Chris Gardner at a plantation, Florida, has really silenced this crowd at Kinnick Stadium. Uh, you know, about 70,000 people, when they start making noise, it sounds like about 200,000. But when it's quiet like this, when the visiting team jumps out, that is not a good sign for the home guys. Both teams are coming off a couple of losses that neither expected. Michigan State losing at Louisville a couple of weeks ago and Iowa losing at Tulsa a couple of weeks ago. The kickoff will be a touchback. And so Iowa will take over for the third time. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Michigan State has the advantage in real estate and more importantly on the scoreboard, 10 to nothing. Well, it'll be interesting to see here how Iowa comes out. Do they still try to throw the ball on first down and loosen up the Michigan State defense? Or do they say the heck with it, guys? It's time to run the football. Give it to Shaw. Let's get going. And his blocking back is Michael Berger. Of yards. They are allowing Iowa and Michigan State to get all sorts of confidence early. Well, they've got a lot of speed on their defense. You know, Courtney Ledyard was the guy that made the tackle that time. You're going to see once again here, nice pressure. There's Courtyard, Ledyard coming in from the backside. When you have speed like that, the way to attack it offensively is some misdirection, make them run out of position, and then come back. Second and a dozen. And 
Sherman calling another automatic. Pitch out to Shaw. Turns the corner. And that's the first first down of the ball game for Iowa. Picked up 12 on the play. Iowa had an advantage, the formation there. What they did was they put their tight end into the short field, and Michigan stayed aligned to the wide field. They were defending the field, and so Iowa had an extra man over in the short field to block. That was the tight end, and that allowed Cedric Shaw to get outside and pick up a first down. No, actually, he uh, stepped out of bounds three yards short. My mistake, it's third down now and three. Shaw and Berger line up in the I formation. Make it. That is a huge stop for Michigan State. That was what you call a good old-fashioned gut check. Iowa was saying, it's three yards, we can run the football, let's run it and pick it up. And Michigan State said, this is in 1995. You're not going to run for 300 yards or so against us. Our defense is stronger and faster, and they're surrounding shot. He doesn't pick up the first down. Marvin Wright, the strong safety, came up to make the play. And now here's Nick Gallery, the 240-pound punter. Back at his own 15. Launches a beauty. Marvin Wright fields it as well, 27. Across the 40 to the 41, and once again, Michigan State will start in excellent field position, leading by 10. Have had silence, 75,000 Iowa Hawkeye fans on homecoming day with an early 10 to nothing lead, and redshirt freshman quarterback Bill Burke has done the job. Well, and his confidence will just keep growing. You know, he's a guy that had excellent touch on deep balls as well, Charlie, so as his confidence grows, he may try one. He's playing with house money now. He's up by 10. And off to Goldberg. And he gets maybe a couple on the play to four into the 42-yard line. Well, the other thing that Michigan State has going for them right now is that they're winning the battle of field position. I mean, they know that if they don't pick up first downs here, Saban knows he can kick the ball and probably pin Iowa back inside their 20, giving them poor field position. And the way his defense is playing right now, he's got to feel good about that battle in the trenches. Cedric Irvin is now the deep back in the I formation. Garrett Gould is his blocker. The tight end Kerr in motion. Here is Irvin. Still on his feet. Once again, back into Iowa territory where it seems Michigan State has been living. Yeah, but what a great block by Garrett Gould, 45, the fullback. You'll see him to the right of your screen. He's going to do a real nice job of a kickout block. You'll see Irvin right there. Here he comes right now, number 47, 45, right there. Garrett Gould's going to do a nice job of the block. You see him go, good kickout right there on Brett Chambers. And that's just what Irvin needed to get outside and pick up a first down. Michigan State's third possession, third time that they have spent some time in Iowa territory. Here's Irvin again. Sneaks through and down inside the 40. Michigan State has a terrific rushing tandem in Dwayne Goldburn and Cedric Irvin. This is what they have done coming into the game. And they are picking up where they left off against Iowa, and we have an injured Spartan on the field. It looks like Nigeria Carter, the wide receiver who threw that great block earlier in the ball game. And he also scored the touchdown pass. Yeah. Being attended to at the 45-yard line. <laughs> They really can't afford to lose him. He is a, a guy that's really come on for them this season because you have to keep in mind that Derek Mason broke his wrist in the first game of the season, and they started counting on Carter to be more productive, and he responded. He had a big game uh, last week, a couple weeks ago. Uh, he played very well, and they've been throwing him more and more. He caught the touchdown pass, as you mentioned, Charlie, today, so they'll need him back in the game. So Nick Saban, the head coach at Michigan State, now in his second season, breathing a sigh of relief as Carter walks off the field under his own steam. 
It is second down and just about two yards to go. The line of scrimmage is the Iowa 39. Gould and Goldberg are in the I formation. The handoff straight ahead. And Goldberg's got the first down. Damian Robinson, the free safety, had to come up and make the tackle. Well, this is a heck of a job that they're doing up front. You know, Scott Shaw is right here. You got to bring him around again. He's going to lead the back up into the hole. And when you can get your lineman with good speed getting out in front like this, watch this here. That's going to make it easy. There's a lot of good blocking going up there. Shaw cleans up. Good yardage. Michigan State, seventh first down of the first quarter. Picks up another eight. And they're running the same old counter. That time Shaw was leading again. You know, they're really doing a good job up front, Michigan State, of blocking down and bringing the guard around. It doesn't matter if it's Irvin or Goldburn running the ball. They're doing a good job of picking up a lot of yardage. So when Goldburn takes a seat, Cedric Irvin comes back into the lineup. Scott Shaw is running interference for him. Irvin, big hole. Flag on the play. Irvin is down at about the eight yard line. A pickup of 18 if the play stands. Illegal formation on the offense. That's about the first play that's gone against Michigan State from the beginning of the game. That's the first time that they don't do anything right here. What do we got here? We've got the three man here. Doesn't You can't see it from this angle, but maybe they move this guy back. Oh, they've got one, two, three guys off the line of scrimmage here, and they're moving at the time of the snap, too. You can't do that. you got to get set there. So it's second down and seven. Line of scrimmage is the 30. will try to get their defense back into this game. Another flag. Well, that time it was the left tackle, Dave Mudge, that jumped just a little bit early. And all of a sudden, Michigan State is going backwards. Five-yard penalty. When you're 6'7 and 289 pounds, as Dave Mudge is, when you move, everybody notices. Well, he probably figured it was a scrum going on. You know, he's, he's an old rugby player from Canada. Whitby, Ontario. So from second and two, it's now second and 12. At the 35. Goldberg. To the 33. Make that Cedric Irvin. Well, you know, if you're Nick Saban with what's been going on, you've done a good job up front. I still think you've got a field goal kicker who's already nailed one. You want points. You don't want to do anything at this point which will take you out of field goal position or turn the ball over. Third down and just about 10. Goldburn now, the single setback. A couple of receivers split way to the right up top of your screen. Out of the backfield. Goldburn gets out of bounds, and they're going to fall well short of the first down. Tom Knight forced him out of bounds. Well, Knight forced him out of bounds, but it was really Cooks who made the play because he had... Goldburn out there in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he made him slow up enough so that Wright could come over. And now the decision. Is there another flag on the play? There is a flag down. Head ball, personal foul on the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. 
Well, you talk about frustration and things not being very good late here. Let's see what happens at the end of the play. Oh, there's someone coming in really late. Looks like Fred Atkins, number 23. You just can't do that. I mean, that's just giving points to Michigan State. And Michigan State was penalized 10 yards in this drive and on third down, what would have been fourth down, Iowa with the late hit gives the Spartans first and 10 at the Hawkeye 17. Irvin, the tailback. Down to the 10-yard line, a pickup of seven. Second and three, Matt Hughes, the linebacker, makes the tackle. Well, it's not surprised that Irvin was one of the top recruits in the country. Watch how he bounces this thing outside. Good blocking, a little bit uh, shut in there, and he finds the soft spot outside. He's a very instinctive runner, knows how to bounce to the outside to pick up yardage. Irvin scored four touchdowns in his college debut on opening day against Purdue last month. He is also the cousin of Michael Irvin. The Michael Irvin. Second down. Right up the gut, Irvin to the five. I tell you, Scott Shaw has probably been the best player in the ball game uh, so far, especially for Michigan State. I mean, that big man at the left guard spot has been doing a great job on this counter. Watch him pull again. He's got good feet, quickly gets out in front, and he just clears the way for Irvin to get in behind him and pick up the first down. It's first and goal on the five, Charlie. Scott Shaw, number 73. There he is. 6'4", 295 from Sterling Heights, Michigan. And this is the 10th play of their third drive. And Irvin is tripped up at the three. Well, this is so difficult for a defense. When you have a team that is pounding the ball right up the middle on you, I mean, it's like taking a punch in the stomach. You know, you don't mind if a team makes some yardage outside from time to time, but you got to be able to stop people in the middle of the field. Aiden Fry knows it, and he's very worried because his team has not played good defense. Second and goal. Actually, the line of scrimmage is closer to the four. Goldberg is a deep back, and Goldberg is stopped shy of the end zone down inside the two. If you're Iowa, you really have to start shoring up the inside. Sort of the same play again. You're going to see the same thing. A little pull again. Goldburn just powers in there. Good job up front also at the center spot. Goldburn in his sixth year at Michigan State. Suffered a broken leg last year. He was a red shirt freshman. Got special dispensation from the NCAA to play again. And there's a flag play. I don't think he got in, but there are two flags. They call it a touchdown, but let's wait and see. Upside defense decline. Well, Nick Saban's club is now up 16 to nothing, and we're still not out of the first quarter. team is hardly out of the woods. They are stuck deep in the woods. Here's Gardner for the extra point. 17 to nothing. Well, we talked to Nick Saban last night, and he said, you know, if my line is playing well, ball game then I'll know we're gonna have a good day well he's got to be feeling pretty good because right now his offensive line is just pushing Iowa around last year Iowa at East Lansing beat the Spartans 21 to 7 and beat them up on the ground and today in a complete role reversal Michigan State is doing to Iowa what the Hawkeyes did under them last year. This was a 12-play, 60-yard drive, 11 rushes, and just one pass. And Dwayne Goldhorn, actually it's pronounced Goldhorn. Bell Gould, pronounced Gold. In his sixth year, 
not such a big deal. Took me six years to graduate, too. <laughs> Was it only six? It had Bradley? nothing to do with bad legs. <laughs> I think that's Nigeria Carter, who's all banged up, like some bridge heading to the locker room for some attention. Richard Carter with the kickoff return. The junior from Passaic, New Jersey, gets it across the 20 to the 23. Next Saturday on the Big Ten Network, more football, Illinois at Michigan State. And the Spartans now are sitting pretty. That's next Saturday. This Saturday, they've got a 17 to nothing lead here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. But Charlie, on that last drive, one of the real big plays was that 15-yard personal foul penalty on Iowa which had it not happened, Michigan would have tried about a 47-yard field goal and turned it over. Demo Odoms is flanked to the top of the screen. Tim Dwight down at the bottom. And Iowa is going to start passing. And Sherman's going to hit the puck. Finally gets rid of it. Intended theoretically for Tim Dwight. But this crowd's getting nasty. Well, I think the crowd is frustrated because they know they have a good running team and they can't figure out why in the heck their team can't run. Now, watch here. You're going to see a two-deep coverage. They're going to sit back there, and these guys are going to sit out. There's not going to be anyone open. Now, stop it right there. Now, this guy looks open, but there are defenders all the way around. He can't get that ball in there. So Sherman waits. He holds the ball. He holds it. Nobody comes open, and then he gets flushed out of the pocket. Sherman is just one of five for eight yards. Second and 10, Iowa, at their own 23. Sherman is sacked inside the 10-yard line by Courtney Ledyard, number 53. Well, right now, the Iowa game plan has been thrown out the window, and they're throwing the ball early, and it's making it very, very difficult. You're going to see Ledger 53 come into your screen. There's a little stunt going on, and he comes right up the middle, beats his man decisively, and gets right to the quarterback. Ledger 6'3", just 237 pounds from Shaker Heights, Ohio, a 19-year-old sophomore. When he makes plays, they are generally big. Five sacks and seven tackles for losses this year. Well, he's very fast, and you can't stay in front of him if you're an offensive lineman that weighs about 290. He's too quick for you. Third and 22. Iowa moving backwards. This will be the last play of the first quarter. Sherman trying to throw it over the middle. He completes it to Demo Owens. Still on his feet. Out of bounds. Inside. The 25. He may have stepped out of bounds back at the 35. Oh, you know, you wonder how can this happen on third and 22. It's a two deep coverage, and the safety's not going to play the ball. You see 18 right there just waited. That ball was in the air so long that he should have been able to make a play. Sherman had the presence to hang in there and deliver the ball to Odoms. Picked up the first down. Stepped out of bounds at the 35, but finally something has gone right for Iowa on the last play of the first quarter. Third down play here, Charlie. Watch here. These linebackers are supposed to get deep. They don't because these runners come in and they keep them short. So they lose a lot of depth. Third and 22, those linebackers have to get back. So the ball has to be thrown higher. Stop it right there. You don't see it. See how short they are? They should be back here, but they aren't. And so that gives enough room for Sherman to get the ball in, and then you get poor play out of the safety right, who doesn't come in and make a blow or pick off the ball when the ball is in the air for such a long time. Number 10, Demosthenes Odoms third. And so it is first and 10 for the Hawkeyes for the first time in Michigan State territory. The pass is overthrown, intended for Dwight, and he got himself leveled. On the first quarter, statistically, incredibly, Iowa rushed for a grand total of one yard. Yeah, keep in mind that Cedric Shaw had 250 yards last season against Michigan State, and he's basically been shut out so far. Second down and 10. At the 
35. White and Odom to the flanker. Shaw is a single setback. And he trips and falls over the 35 yard line. Reese makes the tackle. Ike Reese, the linebacker from Cincinnati. Uh, Michigan State is just saying basically to Iowa, you want to win the ball game, you got to throw. We're going to take eight men if we have to, nine men if we must, and put them up in the box and near the line of scrimmage so you can't run the football. And that's Third why, down Iowa, and ten. why Iowa's throwing the ball so much, Charlie. They are one for four. Third down situation. When you're third and nine, that's a tall order. Sherman's in trouble. Throwing on the back foot, and he is completed to the tight end, Chris Knipper. Knipper will score. A 35-yard touchdown pass and run. A broken play. Chris Knipper with the touchdown. For uh, Knipper, his third touch or his third reception of the year, his first touchdown. Uh, Matt Sherman showed you his ability to make something happen after the play breaks down. Blitz was coming, man-to-man -man coverage. Somebody lost Knipper, and then just a poor job of tackling by Michigan State on the blitz and in the pass coverage. Well, the sleeping giant has awakened. This giant of a crowd, 75,000. The extra point. And Iowa finally gets himself on the scoreboard. But still, the Hawkeyes trail by 10. Iowa shut out in the first quarter. Finally gets some points on the board on the 35-yard touchdown pass and run by the tight end Chris Knipper on a broken play. Matt Sherman passing off the back foot for the score. Derek Mason will stand deep awaiting the kickoff. From Zach Robert. Well, Knipper is not even the starting tight end. He is a six foot five inch, 241 pound sophomore from Dyersville, Iowa. And had he not scored that touchdown, the Hawkeyes would have been in dire straits. I think Ray Hill knows who he is now. <laughs> he ran over Hill at the five yard line. Kickoff is high and very short. Fielded inside the five-yard line. Marvin Wright, the strong safety, butchered that play, didn't he? Oh, Charlie, we're back at the touchdown here. You're going to see the blitz come up the middle here. Here's Knipper. He's just going to run this way. No one's covering him. Looks like we're getting zoned here, but there's man coverage everywhere else. So no one accounts for Knipper. Looks like a blown assignment here, and they expected the blitz to get there. It did not. There's Knipper, wide open. Nobody picked him up. They zoned the offside. They put man coverage over there, but nobody had responsibility for Knipper. Well, this crowd's come alive, hasn't it? First and 10, Michigan State back at their own four. Cedric Irvin across the five to about the seven yard line. Charlie, one more time, we'll take another look at the touchdown that Iowa scored to get them emotionally back into this ball game. Again, you see the crossing routes, man-to-man -man coverage, and Sherman does a real nice job of avoiding the sack. Poor tackling by Michigan State. They have to hit home on that blitz. They didn't do it, and it cost them big time. Threw it off his back foot, and Nipper was wide open and rumbled on home. Second and seven. Irvin slips and falls and is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Charlie, a very significant point here is to keep in mind that against Louisville, Michigan State came apart. They just fell apart as things went bad. And Nick Saban told us last night he's not sure how his team will respond when things start to go bad. And so far today, it hasn't been a very good response. The Spartans jumped off to a 17 to nothing lead. They still lead 17 to 7. But you sense the momentum, you hear the crowd, the tide appears to be turning. Third and seven. Flags are flying. 
Well, you know, you have to keep your team emotionally into the ball game. You can't get down. And Michigan State has had three bad plays in a row now. Ball start. Make it four. Yeah, four, actually five. You know, you go back to the touchdown, and then you mess up the kickoff return. You drop it. And then you come on out, and you don't pick up yardage. And then you have a penalty. I mean, that's just inexperience and maturity. You know, they talk about needing leadership at Michigan State. Now is the time for them to pick it up. Third and 11. And the fans in Iowa City don't want to see that happen. Goldberg. Beautiful run across the 10, but short of the first down. Now, that was Urban again. Yeah, and you know... You talk about leadership, there's a man, a freshman, who is stepping up and he's saying, I'm going to help my team out here. Going to run hard to pick up enough yardage to make it a little bit easier on my punter. And on Iowa's part, Hayden Fry has got to believe his team is right back in it. They're going to get the ball in good field position, Charlie. Paul Ettinger will punt it away. He is about three yards deep into the end zone. Tim Dwight. Demo Odoms are standing deep. Flag flies again. Punt is shallow. Fielded by Dwight. And brought down at the 47-yard line, but there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. It was a 35-yard punt. Let's see what happens. Michigan State falling apart at the seams. They're going to do it one more time, apparently. Well, sure, why not? Formation on the offense, repeat, fourth down. Yeah, make them kick it again because you're going to back them up even further. You put a little bit more pressure on the kicker. I mean, you don't know what might happen. You might get a safety back here. They may drop the ball. You're going to get the ball in good field position. You might break a run. So I think it's a good call by Hayden Fry to make them kick it again. Ettinger has a pretty good foot, though. 17 of his 28 punts have gone 40 or more yards. That one was uncharacteristic at 35. But now he's about seven yards deep into the end zone. And there is no margin of error for the long snapper. Kyle Rance. That's not much of a punt either. Takes a bounce. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line, and Iowa is in great shape, but they're still trailing by 10. Here's Mike Cleason. Mike? All right, Charlie, coming up at halftime here on the Big Ten Network, we'll hear from Buckeye running back Pepe Pearson in the long-standing tradition of tailbacks at Ohio State. Plus, we'll have highlights of that Michigan Northwestern game, Minnesota-Purdue, as well as top-ranked Florida on the road in Arkansas. Now, let's go back to Charlie and Rodney in Iowa City. Michigan State leading by 10. Iowa has the ball and clearly has some momentum and their home fans back in their back pocket again. Well, we'll get a chance to see if Michigan State can step up defensively because I believe Iowa is going to pound the ball at them right now. Cedric Shaw is the eye back. And Shaw finally stopped at about the 35-yard line. So he picks up nearly six on the play. And Sori Canoe, number six, is limping noticeably. Well, Iowa went to two tight ends in this formation, came back and just, again, pounded the ball inside. You're going to see a good lead block by the fullback, Berger, coming right up in there, right in there. And there you see a nice cut by Shaw to get into the secondary there. Picks up about five, six yards on the plate, Charlie. Second down and four. The line of scrimmage is the Iowa, or make that the Michigan State, 35-yard line. Shaw and Banks are split in the backfield. Little misdirection. Tavian Banks gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Uh, Charlie, you know, one thing that really gets me that I don't understand is, you know, why are these guys standing up? These are the tight ends for Iowa, and they stand them up a lot. Now, we asked Nick Saban about that, and he says, I, I don't know, I can't figure it out, but he knows that his linebackers in the past have said they have trouble seeing over those guys. But I think it's more difficult for a tight end to block when he has to stand up like that. 
third and four, and Iowa's two of five in third down situations today. Here's Sherman rolling. Throwing on the run, and he completes it to Tim Dwight. Or he's out of bounds, is he? Dropped the ball. Oh. You know, and Sherman has to be disappointed. They got everything right on that play. You know, you get the good blocking. You get the quarterback rolling out there. He does a nice job of putting the ball over the man that's in front of him. He gets it over the defender, puts it right on the money. This is a tough throw. Watch this. Right there, he's looking. Okay, I got my man. He's got to get it over the defender. Right there, he does. Gets it over right, and you drop the ball. It's not a good play. Wide open. Well, we're going to have a healthy field goal. Brian Hurley is the long distance kicker. He likes to kick him from about 45 and beyond. This is going to be a 51 yard try. Did he make it? Yes. From 51 yards, Brian Hurley brings Iowa back to within a touchdown. And it all happened pretty quickly. It was 17-0 after one quarter, and in five minutes, Iowa's got 10 points back. There's over 173 different sports. Back to within seven points. That thing barely got in there, Charlie. He barely got it over the bar. It looked like it wasn't high enough initially, and he was hoping, I think it can, I think it can, I think it can, I think it can. Yep, it's there. No doubt about it, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the kickoff. Michigan State's going to... And they fumble it out of bounds again. Second time for number 18, Marvin Wright. Yeah, they're picking on him. Yeah, they, they know that Marvin Wright is back there, and they're just picking on him. They're kicking the ball right to him. They know that he's a little bit uncomfortable after having made the first mistake, and they send it right back to him. And he does it again. And right now, he's probably looking for a place to hide. Well, he was also looking directly into the sun, which didn't make it any easier, and that's what he's telling Nick Saban. So here's Michigan State. Everything was going their way in the first quarter, and things are coming undone here in the second. At the 10. goldburn has got a hole. To the 19-yard line, Kerry Cooks, the strong safety, makes the tackle. That's a really nice tandem that they have at tailback with Goldburn and Irvin. You know, they're almost interchangeable. One is the old guy and one is the young guy. Here's the old guy, counterplay. You see them get the defense going one way and then come back the other way. Good blocking at the point of attack. And then Goldburn does the rest. You realize Bush was president when he got, <laughs> when he got to Michigan State? <laughs> Second and one. Goldburn, first down, and then some to the 28-yard line. Well, Iowa rolled the dice a little bit there. They blitzed, and they don't usually do that. And the danger with blitzing on a running play is that if the blitzer doesn't make the tackle, you can make a lot of yardage. Now, watch this. You'll see a guy flying in right there. They don't get him. And so Goldburn is able to get into the secondary, and you have to have the safety Robinson make the tackle. That's tough when you miss it on the blitz. The defensive coordinator for Iowa is Bob Elliott. And we have an injured player on the field. Bob Elliott is 43. His, he's right here. That's Bob. That's right there. And uh, his dad is Bump Elliott, the former AD here at Iowa. Bob Elliott was born and raised in Iowa City, has lived in Iowa City nearly his entire life. And his team has finally begun to settle it down. Iowa trailing by seven. Equilibrium, it would appear. Early 17-0 lead. It's been all Iowa in the second half, but Michigan State has the ball. First and 10 now at their own 27. Here's Goldman. And he can't get outside because Kerry Cooks is there to meet him from his strong safety position, number 15. Uh, they talk about speed. You know, you need that, and they just did a good job, Cook did, of running in the alley to make the play. But you know, what about those running backs at Michigan State? Look at the uh, tandem here. Goldburn, 12 carries for 66 yards, and Irvin, 45. They are well ahead of their pace for this year, for their average run. Second down and about six. Line of scrimmage, Michigan State, 31. And up. Oh, that's a big 
big hole for Cedric Irvin across the 40 to the 43-yard line, a first down. Well, you know, they've been running the trap play all day long, and they've had a lot of success with it, so no reason to change. And Matt Beard, 53, is in the middle of the screen. You'll see him here. He'll do a good job, and you'll see the pulling guard again. There's Scott Shaw once again, but a nice job up front by not only Matt Beard, but Brian Muslim, who wasn't expected to play because of a tender ankle. At number 73, Scott Shaw has been a busy man in his left guard position doing the job for the Spartans today. Oh, that's another big hole, and that's Irvin across the 45 to about the 48-yard line. Here you see Derek Mason, who has been sort of absent from the offense so far. They haven't needed his skills to score the 17 points, but I think they're going to need him at some point this afternoon, and Nick Saban wants to get the ball to him, Charlie, eight or ten times, he said. He wants to see Mason with the ball in his hands ten times. He is recuperating from a broken wrist, but he is pretty near 100%. He is a game-breaker. Again, Cedric Irvin to about the 50. But so far, for Derek Mason, all quiet on the Western Front, with the exception of a punt return for 13 yards. But he is expected to see the ball quite a bit between now and the end of the game. At least that is part of Nick Saban's game plan. Mason is flanked way out to the top. Gilburn is the deep back in the eye formation. Third and short. And Gilbert, boy, he's close. He gets yanked back at the last minute. <laughs> yeah, and his edge was the one who was pulling him back, but I think Goldburn got the first down. And he ran pretty hard in there that time. You'll see him just, uh, you know, power his way in there. They're going to have a measurement now, Charlie. Got the first down, didn't he? Yep. In this drive, six rushing plays and no passing play. And Hayden Fry is a little bit more relieved than he had been, but still his team trails by seven. Clock running with six minutes and 35 seconds left in the first half. Dwayne Goldberg. 23-year-old senior and then some from Detroit. First and 10 at the aisle of 49, and that's Josh Kerr, the tight end in motion. The pass is overthrown. It was intended for Derek Mason, and he was wide open, and Bill Burke knew it. Yeah, he did. He had him on a crossing route. He was wide open, running behind the linebackers and in front of the safeties, and Burke just didn't get it to him. You know, the running game has allowed them to have time with the play-action fake here, and there he is, wide open, Whoa. but he just gets it too high for him. High and far by about a foot. Second down and 10 at the aisle of 49. There is Derek Mason, the senior from Detroit. Goldburn and Gould in the eye formation. Goldburn is the tailback. back at the 45-yard line. Jared DeVries, number 94. He is cat quick at 6'4 and 260. Well, Bob Elliott, the defensive coordinator, anticipated that they'd run short side, and so he had DeVries slanting there. You'll see him right here going in there. He's right there at the bottom. You'll see him slant on in there, and he just takes apart. His man gets right in there, beats Shaw that time. Actually, that was uh, Brian Mazzala that he beat that time. Third down now and almost 15. Burke once again overthrowing Derek Mason. It will be fourth down and fans on homecoming 1996 are right back in this game. They were mausoleum quiet in the first quarter. 
But now their team has come alive. Well, they've been fair weather fans. <laughs> Your team gets down by 17, they give up, they start booing. Now they're back into it. Paul Ettinger to punt it away. Boy, he nearly had it blocked, too. Demo Odom to the 25 yard line. 17 10, Michigan State still leading. In a sold out Kinnick Stadium on homecoming in the Big Ten opener for the Hawkeyes, who trailed 17 0 in the first quarter. They have bounced back with 10 here in the second. And here is Sherman to throw, and he completes it to Tim White. 30 to the 32. White, who dropped one earlier, nearly dropped it again. They're running against the zone defense here, and they just roll the quarterback out. And it's going to be a nice job of adjusting right in between the zone. You'll see right there, Dwight gets in between two defenders and just waits for the ball. And he was concerned a little bit, I think, Charlie, about getting hit, which is why he bobbled the ball. Dwight, a native of Iowa City, didn't stray far to get his college education. Second down and maybe three. The line of scrimmage is Iowa's 33. Cedric Shaw across the 35 to the 40 and a first down. Well, I think the fans wanted a late hit, but there was no flag that came in on it, and there was a big roar that went up when they saw a little extracurricular activity there, Charlie. No foul. First down at the 41 yard line with the clock running in four minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half. Well, Iowa has really gone to pounding the football. They have two tight ends into the ball game. Here's Shaw. And it looks as if the turf was a bit loose out there today. We've seen several players slip. That was Tavian Banks with the carry. But Tavian Banks is a guy. You see the little thing here. They've got two tight ends up here and a tackle. This is one of their unbalanced fronts. You know, they put the formation into the field with all of their stronger guys up to the top, and then they run back to the weak side, is, is expecting Michigan State to rotate their defense to the heavier, stronger side. Second and eight at the 43. And Sherman with another audible. wrestled down in the backfield by Robert Newkirk, the red shirt freshman from Bell Glade, Florida. Uh, you know, Newkirk did a nice job of just getting in there in a hurry here. He's right here. You're going to see him just knife on through there. Good speed, good quickness, and beats both men right at the line of scrimmage. When the guard is firing out to get to the uh, inside linebacker, he left Newkirk to his teammate. Newkirk just shot right in there. Third and ten, Iowa is two of six in this situation today, and that's Tim Dwight in motion out to the top. Sherman with a lot of time throwing to Dwight, and he's got it. First down in Michigan State territory at the 46. Now they're working on Amp Campbell, number three for Michigan State. And Dwight ran a nice comeback route. He ran down like he was going to go deep. And then he just came on back to Sherman. Sherman just drops back, looks for him, and now he waits. He's waiting for him to come back to him, and he does. Campbell just so far off, he can't handle the route. And you know, Charlie, that's a very unique drop back that Sherman has. You know, he just drops back straight back with his shoulders back up. That's sort of atypical of what you see of most quarterbacks. First and 10, Iowa now at the Michigan State, 46. Well, that delay didn't fool anybody, did it? Tavian Banks loses a couple, and that was big Chris Smith making the play. Yeah, Chris Smith will do that. You know, he's a guy that's been around Michigan State for five years. He's a, a blue-collar worker. He's a guy that they count on up front. He's very strong, and he spends a lot of time working on his profession. He wants to be a teacher. And right there, he taught Iowa that you better block him at the line of scrimmage. Gave Tavian Banks a lesson. Second and 15, Iowa back now at their own 49-yard line. Chris Smith. 
Tim Dwight now down at the bottom of the screen, and it looks like Iowa's going to call itself a timeout. And they will. So the Hawkeyes still have two timeouts left here in the first half, and plenty of time. A minute and 57 seconds to go. Both teams, in fact, have two timeouts left. As Matt Sherman, the junior quarterback from St. Ansgar, Iowa, talking with the professorial Hayden Fry. Well, we had a nice visit with Hayden yesterday, you know, in his office. He had those great big old boots on with the Hawkeye logo on them. Yeah, he, he's really enjoying himself. 35 years, and he says, you know, he's having more fun in college football than he ever has before. He said that the, the athletes today are better listeners, better students, because they are more goal-oriented. Sign of the times. He, he also said that he... Um, would like to see some changes in college football. He talked to Joe Paterno and others, and he really believes that players should be paid something so that they can go on dates and have money. The other thing he was talking about with us was uh, the, the whole notion of astroturf. And he is not at all happy that there is as much astroturf in college football as there is. Well, there is Matt Beard, your tremendous, outstanding student, discus athlete of the game. Take a look at him there, what Indeed he's done he is. in school. Discus athlete or athletic salutes the superior performances of student athletes both on and off the field. Discus athletic is proud to be associated with the outstanding versatility that makes these players unique. And Ted Sarama from Iowa is the other. Second and 15 at the 49. And now Michigan State calls a timeout testing Rodney's ability and mine to stretch. <laughs> and that is Nick Saban. And we had a nice visit with him, and he had a lovely suite in his uh, hotel room in downtown Cedar Rapids, Iowa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> At the half, we'll be sending it back to Mike Gleason in the Big Ten studio, and have a look at Peppy Pearson, the outstanding running back from Ohio State. And we'll have highlights of other games from around the Big Ten, Michigan and Northwestern, Minnesota and Purdue. There's Nick Saban. Now, he has a reputation for being a very intense guy. But, um, you know, there's a lighter side to him. His wife says that he's big on line dancing and all kinds of dancing around the house. And he met his wife, believe this or not, when he was a 10-year-old quarterback in Pop Warner football and his wife was then the nine-year-old cheerleader. They grew up together and got married in college. And they're still together today. In fact, halfway through our discussion with Nick Saban yesterday in his suite, knock on the door and somebody delivered his son's knapsack. <laughs> he had left it on the bus. His son, he said, well, he's here with the team having a good time, but he can't remember anything. Second down, 15. Here's Sherman to throw. A lot of time throwing over the middle. And oh, it's intercepted. Intercepted by Sori Canoe, the free safety. Yeah, and that was all on Matt Sherman, it looks like. And he's talking to Dwight about it now because he expected Dwight to run to the post. And Dwight saw Canoe out there, the safety, and so he took it to the corner. Now you'll see in the middle of your screen, Dwight's going to show up, and this ball is overthrown, and Canoe comes back for it. Sherman put that ball too high, and he also needed to lead Dwight away from the middle of the field. Had he put it out there and let him run underneath it, he would have picked it up there, but Canoe instead makes the pickoff. It is pronounced Canoe. First and 10 at the 23. Does that mean I got it right? You do. <laughs> canoe. Hand off. Cedric Irvin. And flags fly from everywhere. Yeah, I think they're going to flag Iowa for a face mask unintentional at the end of the play. I think it was Ennis Inge, number nine, who grabbed uh, Irvin's face mask. And about five seconds after four flags flew, a fifth one came in. I got it, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you see it? I saw it. <laughs> he didn't want to be left out. <laughs> so here's the referee, Jack Teets. Oh, it's a big one, 15 Ooh, yards. Flagrant. I thought it was going to be an unintentional one. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense. 15 yards, first down. 
Well, it's Robinson. It's not Ann. She grabs it right there. And the thing is, you have to let go. If you don't let go of the face mask, it's going to be a 15-yarder. If you let go, it's only a 5-yarder. So now here's Michigan State with a buck 34 to go in the half with a golden opportunity. First and 10 at the 50. Look at Irvin to the 40-yard line, and a first down. Plez Atkins, the right corner, made the tackle. Oh, well, he's a special runner. You know, everybody wanted him. Tennessee wanted him, Florida. A number of places wanted that man to come run the football for them, and he had trouble saying no to all of them. He said yes to about six schools. And only when he arrived at East Lansing was Nick Saban sure he got his man. And boy, he's got a dandy, doesn't he? Not that time. Again, it almost seems as if that sod is a little loose down there, Rod. Yeah, you know, there is some slipping going on out there. And there you see Cedric Urban coming off the field. He had great recruiting trips. He had a great time at Tennessee. <laughs> he had a great time at Auburn. Ohio State wasn't bad either. Miami, Florida State, Michigan State. He said, hey, the last place I go to is the place I'll visit. Tag, you're it. <laughs> Second and 11, here's Burke throwing long down the sideline, and he overthrows his intended receiver, Octavius Long. And Plez Atkins, 23 for Iowa, did a nice job out there and might have got away with a little illegal bump. But as a corner, what you want to do is when someone fakes you and then goes up, you want to get in their way. You want to get in their way and make them run over you, and that's exactly what Atkins did, and that's why that ball was overthrown. So it's third down now and about 11. This is the eighth third down opportunity and Michigan State's only cashed in on three of them. Burke, wide open toward the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan State. Octavius Long. He was wide open by 15 yards. Again, it's the athletic ability of Burke, his ability to make something happen after the play called in the huddle falls apart. That's why Nick Saban put him in the lineup over Gus Orenstein. And Gus, Gus Orenstein was replacing Todd Schultz. And now the extra point for Chris Gardner. And Michigan State stem the hemorrhaging and they've got themselves a nice 24 to 10 lead uh, what presence of mine up there now you see right up here this is long right here now this is supposed to be short coverage and then deep coverage here and what happens is this safety sees burke running around and he runs out of his position so long just keeps going long You'll see the safety settle, and he's looking at the quarterback. You see? Now he runs back, and he says, oh, I forgot about the man on my side. It's too late. Long's in for the touchdown. Whenever you have deep responsibility, yes, you watch the quarterback, but when he starts to scramble, you don't take your eyes and go that way. you got to stay deep where you belong. That didn't happen for Iowa. Robinson gave up the deep zone, and Long picked up the touchdown. It's that little look and that move right there. He saw... Burke looking to his right, and Robinson kept moving over there, and it cost him big time. This was a horrible series for Damian Robinson. He was caught for 15 yards with the uh, face mask penalty, and then he's beaten by Long for the touchdown. And it all began on the interception, and Michigan State has now a 14 point lead. And so, here's Iowa now, with 20 seconds to go on the half. Well, the question for Hayden Fry right now is, do you try to get something, or do you simply go in at halftime? I think right now, for Hayden Fry and his group, you're better off not letting anything else bad happen with only 20 seconds here. Run the clock out. You're at home. Go in at halftime. Regroup. You're only down by two scores. So Matt Sherman has the play, and he's taking his team to the line of scrimmage. Tavian Banks. 
slips and falls. And again. Yeah, yeah you're right, Charlie. It looks like in the middle of that field. And it really shouldn't be that way. We haven't had any rain here the last couple of days or so. The field is just a little bit, little bit soft there. And that will be the last play of the first half. Michigan State leading Iowa 23 to 10. The Spartans in trouble early in the second quarter. Righted their ship late. All right, the Spartans getting off to a good start today, I think, settled him down. That's why they have 23 points in the first half besides of the good running. He has been on the money with a deep pass today, and so I think his confidence has grown, and that's helped Saban and his squad think that, you know, they're in real good shape now. And he's talking with Todd Schultz, who was at the beginning of the season the starting quarterback, but he has a bad knee. He is expected to be back in about three weeks, and so for the moment, the redshirt freshman is serving as a very solid caretaker for Todd Schultz. Yeah, he suffered that injury against Nebraska early in the game, and that was a 55 to 14 loss. And Michigan State really played better in that ball game than one would believe with the 55 points, because 21 of those points came on turnovers. The Spartans with the lead, and they'll have the ball to begin the first half or begin the second half. And once again, for the third time, a kickoff has been this time it was Derek Mason. Yeah, and Derek Mason is very good at returning punts and kicks. And it has to be that Sunfield or the wobble of the ball there. First it was Wright who in the first half dropped it twice out of bounds in about the same spot. Now it's Mason who did it. Now Mason is limping off the field. And it's in the exact same place where Wright bobbled it out of bounds. So you would think the Sun may have something to do with it. I'm sure they're kicking that ball over there intentionally. Octavius Long is now flanked way out to the top of the screen. It's first down. First play, second half. That is Dwayne Goldburn. And Goldburn is across the 10 to about the 15-yard line, just a gain of maybe two. Well, you know, the right side is not a bad side for Michigan State to run on. They've got a big right tackle over there, Flozell Adams, and he's a guy that is likely to be a high draft pick in the NFL. First to second rounder, he goes at about 325 pounds, has been doing a good job today. Interesting story about Adams will pick up in just a moment on second and eight from the I formation. near the 30-yard line. Tom Knight yeah, makes well, the tackle. Well, Charlie, the moment you talk about the guy, he shows you what he can do with a great block over there. Here he is right here. You're going to see him just really do great job blocking right there and drive it open, create the hole. Look at him just drive DeVries out of there, and then a nice block by the fullback leading in there. A lot of room to run when your guys can block like that up front. Great job by Adams. Adams is 6'7", 325 pounds. He is deaf in the right ear. So he plays right tackle. His good ear can hear the signal. First and 10 at the 28. The pass is overthrown and picked off by Tom Knight. Looking to turn the corner. And finally run out of bounds at the 31-yard line, and a flag comes flying in late. Knight with his second interception of the season. Face mask foul on the return. First down. Well, Burke has his man open this time. He's trying to get the ball to Gold. He throws it a little bit high, and Gold, who doesn't have great, great hands, has a tough time trying to make the catch. Actually, it wasn't Gold. It was Cure, the tight end, 83, who couldn't come up with it, and it was right who picked it off. I'm sorry, Tom Knight, number eight, who picked it off and brought it back, Charlie. Tom Knight from Marlton, New Jersey. Halfway between New York and Philly. Cedric Shaw and Michael Berger in the I formation. And Iowa capitalize on the turnover. They give it to Shaw, up the gut inside the 25 to 
at the 23. Picks up, oh, maybe three yards on the play. And Shaw ran right into the freshman, Mike Austin, number 25, who's an outside linebacker. You see him right there on your screen, 25. He's going to slide on inside and meet Shaw right in the hole. And that's a good job from a young man who was just in high school just a few months ago. It was 17-0 in the first quarter, and now Iowa is trailing by 13 with ideal field position at the Michigan State 23 following the pick. Cedric Shaw turns the corner and belt it out of bounds. And another flag. Yeah, yeah, they got a flag. It looked like Austin or... I thought it was Austin who came over, but it might have been right number 18 instead. But there was clearly a Michigan State player who took a shot on Shaw when he was out of bounds. You know, and you just can't get too over aggressive out there. You got to understand where you are on the field. And right number 18 is in the middle of the screen. Shaw is going to go out of bounds. He's right there, and he takes the shot at the end. He knew he had to be out of bounds. The short field over there. And as you can see in this nearly 70-year-old stadium, there is not a lot of room out of bounds. Yeah, the fans are right on top of you. There may be like 10 yards between the sideline and the railing over there. So if you take a late hit, you can really hurt yourself. From the 10. Cedric Shaw spins and gets nothing. Shaw has real good ability to change directions, and there's really nothing here, but he does a nice job of showing you his athletic ability, spinning and twisting to avoid tackles just to pick up a yard or two. There wasn't a heck of a lot there for him. And he's a big guy, too, you know. He goes at about 6'2 and 205, 210 pounds. Second and goal at the eighth. Shaw and Berger in the eye. Tim Dwight is the flanker at the bottom of the screen. Throwing. Touchdown, Knipper! The backup tight end has been the big star today. Chris Knipper came into the game with two catches all season. He's yeah. got two touchdown receptions this afternoon. Uh, he doubled those two catches in a big way by putting touchdowns at the end of them today. Michigan State forgot about him because Iowa didn't throw the ball to him a lot. Let's cost him. And now Iowa can move to within six. Zach Robert for the extra point. And he clanked it. Off the upright. It's still shaking. And we're going to take a break with 12-10 to go in the third quarter. Michigan State 23-16, and this is how Iowa got itself back in the game. He's gotten his Hawkeyes right back into this game. They trail by 7, 23 to 16. And here is the kickoff. Michigan State still having problems with it. And now finally, Derek Mason is run out of bounds. Touchdown, Rodney. Well, here he is. This Knipper right here. And you're going to see him swim this guy here. But watch this guy here. It looks like a blown coverage because nobody takes Knipper as he goes outside. Reese will get swum right there. He doesn't take him. And then you see Garnett doesn't go after him either. They let him go. No one picks him up. A blown coverage by Michigan State. And you can see it from this angle again. A little bit of confusion in the secondary for Michigan State. So now here are the Spartans trailing by seven their own 17. Cedric Irvin gets nothing. Vernon Rollins, one of the Hawkeyes' two leading tacklers, shows you why. And Vernon Rollins was a man who had an outstanding high school career, turning in 36 quarterback sacks in high school. 
He and Matt Hughes, the two outside linebackers, lead Iowa in tackles, and that is Brian Masalem, the right guard, who came into the game with a very gimpy ankle, and apparently he has re-injured it. He was a game-time decision. They didn't think he was even going to go today. Well, it's really going to hurt them to lose him because that's going to cause a shift in the offensive line. They'll have to move Matt Beard from center over to right guard, and then Jason Strayhorn, the backup center, will move in and take over at that spot. Masalem started all 12 games last year, and there is Beard, and we expect him to move over to right guard, and 79 is Jason Strayhorn standing right next to him. Strayhorn is a 280-pound sophomore from Indianapolis. Yeah, and he has a clean jersey. He has, <laughs> I mean, look at him. He's got the clean jersey, so you know he hasn't played a lot today. And he's got to get in the game and get in tune with what that line has been doing. Strayhorn will be the uh, will be the center, but he has had work with Bill Burke being the backup center, and Burke at the beginning of the year was the backup quarterback. So there is some reason for some guarded optimism on the. Michigan State side of the field. We will watch the exchange closer. Between Strayhorn and the quarterback, Bill Burke. So far, so good. Irvin to the 19. And once again, Iowa's crowd is back into it. Uh, you know, if you sit on the sideline all day like Strayhorn did, it's a little bit tough to get into the ball game. I mean, it's been about three or four hours since he really did anything. Now look at him. He's like, oh, okay, let me... Oh, Where is everybody? Hey, somebody for me to hit? Well, all right, I got the ball to the quarterback. That's a good start. Where is everybody? <laughs> he falls into the pile. Well, he's got a grass stain on his right knee. Oh, he's ready now. He's ready to play now. Because his folks back in Indianapolis are watching. They'll tease him a little bit. But now he's into the ball game. Third down and eight. And this crowd is into the ball game. The Hawkeyes have trailed from the get-go. And they're down by seven. And Burke is down inside the 15. Oh, good job by Bob Elliott to go ahead and go after them a little bit. When you have a new center of the ball game and you change your offensive line, the calls change for picking up stunts. And that's what they do that time. They come with a stunt that time, and Klein is able to get in with a good job. Watch Strayhorn here. He's going to have a much better time right now. See, he takes on Klein, does a good job, holds him out of there, but Ortlieb, 99, is the one that gets in to make the sack. John Ortlieb from Boca Raton, Florida with his first sack of the season. And Edinger now to punt it away, and this isn't much of a punt either. On one hop, Dwight. Still on his feet! Still on his feet! Down at the five! pounds came into the game averaging 12.1 yards per punt return this year yeah makes a very aggressive play here by taking a punt on the bounce and that's a good job when you can advance the ball like that when your team needs to have it done and he just keeps fighting for yardage this young man scored 80 touchdowns in high school by doing things like this being aggressive and taking the ball to the defense and he grew up just a couple of miles from Kinnick Stadium he stayed home Shaw, the single setback. First and goal at the five. Shaw is open. Shaw will score! First quarter, 
And now we are all even. Well, Shaw hasn't been able to get a lot going running the ball, but here he is here. You're going to see him just head on out here, but nobody's going to get him. You see confusion out here because they don't know who to line up with, so they leave him alone. It should be taken by a linebacker, but they're rushing, and you don't get there. There's a pick right in the middle of the screen. Freeze it. Right here is the pick. This is the guy who should have been over covering Shaw, but he couldn't get there because of the pick by Dwight. It looks like Reese in the middle who's expecting to go out and cover Shaw, but he gets picked off by Tim Dwight, number six, who had the great punt return. Nice job by Sherman that time, giving his guy Shaw plenty of time to get the ball and just cruise on in with it with a great pick play. Shaw came into the game averaging over six yards per carry, but he has struggled on the ground today. Ten carries for 36 yards. But with that touchdown, Iowa, for the first time since the opening kick, is all even with Michigan State. You know, Charlie, that really should have been a penalty. That should have been brought back because that was a very blatant pick by Dwight. Well, they got away with one. And here's the kickoff. Michigan State has made every kickoff an adventure. Here is Mason. is slow to get up. Well, Mason has been hurting, and they really haven't been able to get him into the ball game. You know, he came in with that broken wrist he's been recovering from, and he had a bad finger. Now he's limping, and not to have him a part of the offense really hurts Michigan State. So Octavius Long, who scored the touchdown pass late in the first half, is in, and he's flanked way out to the top of the screen. First and 10 at the 25. And up. Colburn across the 30 to the 32. Uh, Charlie, now, if you think about this for a minute for Michigan State, they have lost their two starting wide receivers, and they're playing a backup quarterback as well. Again, a trap play here. You're going to see Irvin get behind Scott. They've run this very well all day long, and they're going to have to do a lot more of it because their passing game is now limited because they've lost their two starting wide receivers. Now, Gia Carter, who scored the first touchdown of the game, left with ribs, bruised as they may be, and now Mason is limping on the sideline. Second and two at the 33. Over and again, fumbles. Still loose. Michigan State has it. And oh, that was the momentum turner for Iowa. A very difficult way to get a first down. Uh, yeah, I tell you. I don't know who the first guy is that gets in for Iowa, but he tries to run with this thing, and it looked like Robinson. Yep, it was Robinson who thought he could dive in there and pick it up instead of just trying to surround the ball, and that gave Michigan State one more opportunity, and they recovered it. Meanwhile, there is an injured player, and it's... Number 63 is Brian Masalem. He's back in the lineup again, and he just can't go anymore. Brian Masalem, who came into the game with a bad ankle. Well, he's been trying all week, and he's trying to get his teammates you know, to, to lift it up a level. He's telling them he can try and play on a bad ankle when they know how much he's been in pain, and he's back out there. He wants his teammates to rally and stop the blood flow here. I mean, the bleeding for Michigan State has just been, been something else. Nick Saban has said his team has not responded very well to adversity, and they hit it big time in the second quarter, now again in the third quarter, and we've got a tight ball game. Spartans at their own 41. Tied at 23. A big opener for Cedric Irvin into Iowa territory. Oh, just a quick hitter on the left side. Good job up front. Scott Shaw, David Mudge, 65, blocking on the left side. You'll see them really not do a nice turn. And also Strayhorn, 79, who just came back in at center, got a nice block up there, and Irvin just had to get in behind him. 
see what he's done on the day, Charlie. 106 yards already. The leading rusher on the afternoon. First and 10 at the 45 of Iowa. And that's long in motion for the Spartans. And once again, Irvin up the middle for about three. Well, now Iowa has adjusted their defense. They have figured out that Michigan State doesn't have the two starting wide receivers. So now they're playing man-to-man -man coverage, and they're keeping the safety free, and they're committing the other eight guys to stop the run. There you see all the guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All these guys here are there to stop the run from right in there. The rest of the guys are playing man-to-man -man coverage. That's the change now Iowa's gone to because they realize it's going to be harder for Michigan State to throw the ball. Second and ten. Pass is complete to Irvin, and he is run out of bounds at the 24-yard line by Plez Atkins. Oh, what a great adjustment by Michigan State because when you have man-to-man -man coverage, the thing is you've got backs on man-to-man -man with linebackers, and that's an advantage here. You know, when you get your halfback on a linebacker or so, that's a good matchup for you. Irvin gets outside, picks up the first down. Good job by the Michigan State coaching staff. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. These Spartans are a feisty lot. Goldberg. He's got some room for the 17. Damian Robinson made the tackle. That old man has been around for six years. He does a nice job of cutting into that crease. I mean, this thing is going to string out. He's going to read it. He's got good blocking out front. And when he sees it, he goes right now. And that's what you need your running backs to do. When you feel that crease, you've got to get in there quickly and get out of it. And Goldberg did a nice job there. He missed all of last year with a broken leg and received special dispensation from the NCAA to play in his sixth year. Second and one. And he's got a first down. And finally brought down at the 12-yard line. He's running hard, Charlie, and he's actually worked real hard in school, too. He didn't waste any of those six years picking up his second degree now. But, you know, you got good blocking up front again. Watch the left side again. You're going to see a good job over here, good blocking out there, and that's what's going to happen. Good blocking down. Now watch him get in behind that and do a nice job of picking up the yardage again. Mudge and Shaw, the left side of the Michigan State line. First and 10 at the 12. Irvin still on his feet and down at the 6. You know, and Irvin runs with a little bit more power than Goldburn does, and that's a nice change of pace. And it's tough for a defense when you expect one guy to come in, and you don't know the new guys in the ball game, and he's got a little different style, a little bit more pop right there. And he'll stick it right in there on you, Irvin does. Goldburn is 5'9 and 200. Irvin is 6 feet about 2 10. Look at that. Yeah. We did not expect that today. Iowa's rushing game has done nothing, and Michigan State has been very solid on the ground. Irvin again, this time to the 5. Only a gain of maybe a yard and a half. defense in this area all you do is slam in try to push guys back and you see Michigan State up there doing a good job Matt Beard pushing away just a bunch of bodies in there just pushing against each other Charlie. the wide bodies doing a lot of parallel parking and they're bumping into one another <laughs> five, minutes ago, yeah. <laughs> five minutes ago third quarter third and about two Did he make it? Damian Robinson hit him. I think he got it. I mean, he got up over that pile. And he started this thing off on the right side behind Flozell Adams, 76. They're a great big right tackle. And you'll see him cut it back just enough. You see, there's a pulling guard again. Once again, Shaw. And he finds a soft spot, Irvin does, and just jumped over the pile. Damian Robinson came in from his free safety position and nails him. Yeah, you know, Flozell Adams, 76, just came blocking down, crushed the uh, side of that. Short of the first down by about a foot and a half. 
Nick Saban? You want points? What do you want to go for? It? I think right now, the way your offensive line is playing, I think you go for this. And the way I always had such a difficult time in moving the ball, especially on the ground, if you don't make it, at 97 yards to go. Exactly. I think it's a good gamble here, the way his offensive line is playing. And there is going to be a timeout as Michigan State and Nick Saban are going to reconsider or at least try to figure out what to do fourth and about a foot and a half with four minutes and 22 seconds to go in the third quarter a key moment in this game coming up when we come back You'll catch all the great NFL, college, and NASCAR action in a clean, friendly atmosphere. Test your halftime skills with a game of pool or darts, and Varsity 65 has great menu items during all those TV timeouts. From appetizers and burgers to chicken sandwiches and grilled steaks on the weekends. So forget about those JV sports bars and head to the real Varsity. Varsity 65, 800 North 8th Street, Council Bluffs. This may be the moment in this game. Fourth down and about a foot and a half. Aiden Fry's got his defensive scheme in. Nick Saban is now putting the ball into the hands of quarterback Bill Burke and likely the running back, Cedric Irvin. because the offensive line for Michigan State has just been dominating Iowa. And it was no different on that play. I mean, you can pick out the guys you want. It was Trey Horn at center who did a good job. It was Flozell Adams on the right side who buried his man. And it was Shaw coming across with a kick block. And the extra point has given Michigan State the lead. 30 to 23. How do you get a touchdown? Watch a block here. Adam's going to block down. You get a good block here. And then you bring Shaw on around here, and you lead him up inside. All of the linemen do a great job up front. There you see it. Nice job. Frozell Adams, 76, crushing his man. And then Irvin finishing off with a great leap right at the end. Nick Saban watching his team take the lead. Like... It was planned, preordained, and Hayden Fry on the other side of the field at the age of 67. Now his team has work to do, trailing by seven points again. Now Hayden Fry is a little bit exasperated. He can't stop the run. He's trying to figure out, well, what do we do to stop the run? He figured that they can handle it a little bit. Nick Saban, on the other hand, felt that his guys could really do pretty good. That picture looks a little funny at home. Not to worry, it's your television set, call the repairman. <laughs> we are having some uh, some sunspots from high up there in the universe, and that is causing some problems on your screen. This is Richard Carter for Iowa. And Carter is going to be brought down at the 23-yard line. I think you might get a whole bunch of TV repairman bills <laughs> mailed to you. <laughs> that is Cedric Irvin, and look at the rushing tandem. They have done the job for Michigan State. Wayne Goldburn and Cedric Irvin. Uh, you know, look at that for a moment. Think about that. 225 yards rushing for Michigan State, and this is a team that has lost its two top wide receivers. I mean, you know, they're boxing with one hand behind their back, and they're still doing a pretty darn good job. Yes, they are. First and 10 at the 20. Cedric Shaw, who rushed for 240 yards last year at East Lansing for the Hawkeyes, has been stymied so far today. Backfield is split. Here's the pass. Way off the mark intended for 
Tim Dwight at the 35. Well, Matt Sherman got fooled that time. He thought Michigan State was coming with the blitz, so he checked out of the play he had called, and he threw right into coverage. They, they dropped off into a zone defense, and he thought it was going to be man-to-man, -man, and he got fooled that time. And that'll happen with young quarterbacks. Michigan State's defensive coordinator is Dean Pease. At the age of 47, he is in his second season as the coordinator in East Lansing. His team came up with nine sacks last week against Eastern Michigan up at East Lansing. On second down. Pass over the middle. That's Dwight. He got it at the 42-yard line. Well, Sherman read that one correctly. He caught Michigan State in a two-deep zone, and once again, the Michigan State linebackers right here, they don't get enough depth. They don't get back far enough, and so Dwight is able to run right behind them, but in front of the safety. And Sherman threads the needle. Pickup of 17 yards on the play, and here come the Hawkeyes. Trailing by seven, three minutes and 45 seconds ago, third quarter. To the 50. Brought down by the cornerback, Ray Hill, number 10. Well, Hill was the guy that got run over in the first half by Knipper on the touchdown. And you'll see Shaw this time. This is the lead play. He's supposed to follow his fullback inside, but he fills the soft spot outside, so he cuts outside to take on Hill. He doesn't try to run around him. He runs right at him. Hill and Canoe, the right corner and the free safety team up to tackle Cedric Shaw. It is now second down and about two after a pickup of eight. And here's Shaw again. He's got a first down and then so. Run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A pickup of nearly eight yards on the play. Sorry, Canoe again running Shaw out of bounds. A real good job of blocking again that time. You know, Michael Berger, 85, is leading this play. Watch the kick out on Hill right there. Freeze that. You see him? There's your hole. He's going to run right through that now. That's a good job by Berger with a big block. I'd say that was a fat Berger. That was a Ross. That was a Ross Verba. <laughs> Ross Verba, 6'4", 285. Oh, you didn't like the fat burger? <laughs> And why are you poking my stomach when you do that? <laughs> 30 to 23. Iowa trailing by seven. Here's Sherman with a lot of time. Unloading underneath, and he completes it to Tavian Banks, and Banks is brought down at the 32. Well, on the one hand, Michigan State is accomplishing what they want. They're taking Iowa out of their game, but Matt Sherman is up to the task. He's getting plenty of time to find his receivers. He's coming off to the second and third receivers, and he does a nice job. This time the bank, and they pick up a lot of yards. They'll be about second and two or so. Less than that. About a yard and a half. They have to get right to the 30. Banks again, the tailback. Knipper in motion. Running behind Knipper, first down at the 25-yard line. Tavian Banks. Archie Garnett made the tackle. Uh, Charlie, it's a real tough job for a center to snap the ball and then get out in front and lead a play. But watch right here. You're going to see Reard in the center. He's going to snap it and then get out and lead this play. Look at him in the hole there, and look at the big hole that's created. He leads Banks into the hole. Banks gets in there to pick up the first down. What a great job by Reardon. And that was some block by Aaron Granquist, the fullback. First and 10 at the 25. Fabian Banks to the 22. Tory Canoe has been a very busy man today. Yeah, he comes in with a big hit, but not until Banks picks up some good yardage. Watch this. You're going to see Canoe come in at the end of this play, and Banks will go backward. That's a big hit right there. You know, and the, the players on the Michigan State team talk about Canoe's and the size of his arms. He has huge biceps and triceps. Look at these things there. Look how big those arms are. Second down and five. Michigan State 20. And a pass. For the end zone. Knipper has got it. Inside the one. It is Chris Knipper Day. On homecoming day. And 
Charlie, this should be a touchdown, but it isn't. Sherman throws a nice ball, but he waits too long. He's open right now. Throw it now. He waits a beat too long, and that means that Nipper gets closer to the sideline, does a little tap dance, but can't get into the end zone. First and goal at the one. If Sherman threw that, had thrown that ball just a little bit sooner, it would have been a touchdown. Full house backfield. Banks will score. On a second and then third effort, Tavian Banks. Again. Is this what Big Ten football has come to? Whatever happened to 10 to 4, 10 to 6 ball games, huh? Zach Robert now with the extra point. pinball on this play is going to take a couple of big shots but he is determined to get into the end zone right is the first one nice spin move and then he manages to hang in there when reese comes over for the big pop at the end that's a tough guy that's tough running down there Fabian banks who broke his left arm in the fifth game of last season missed the rest of the year has come back in a big way talking with him yesterday instead of Banks. He reminds him quite a bit of Ronnie Harmon. One of the great all-time running backs here at Iowa. You know, Banks says that he doesn't really like contact. Didn't look like it on that play. Right in the middle of the screen is Don Patterson. His 18th year here at Iowa. He came in with Hayden Fry, just 45 years old fifth year as the offensive coordinator of the Buckeyes. In fact, he's the only remaining coach of Hayden Fry's original staff. Yeah, he's right there. The guy with the mustache. He is not literally challenged like some people. <laughs> what am I going to tell <laughs> Take off high and short. It's been an adventure for Michigan State nearly every play on special teams. This is Derek Mason in trouble. strip right at the end there. He's hanging on to the ball. Knee is down. He's Ooh. down right there. And that ball comes out afterwards. He was already down on that play. I suppose if there was a benefit of replay, it would be Michigan State ball. Yeah, well, that was Eric Bigpin, 21, who stripped that ball out. But even at, the, at uh, game speed, I thought that ball was down. I mean, I think when, when it was live, my initial thought was he was down and that ball should not have been ruled a fumble. Watch here. His knee is going to go down. When that knee is down, the play is over. He's down right now. There. And now he's rolling over. He, he still has the ball. the ball. And now it's out. That's not a fumble. Michigan State has had all sorts of problems with its special teams today. that last kickoff, which really wasn't a fumble, and they've missed the PAT, and then gave up a big return to Dwight that set up a big touchdown for Iowa. That was very reminiscent of the Keyshawn Johnson play for the Jets last Sunday night in Washington. Very close. Here is Cedric Shaw. And Shaw to the 25-yard line. He picked 
makes up nine. I guess you can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. And they contained him in the first half. And Shaw has been the man in the third quarter for Iowa. I've heard that line before. I wonder where. <laughs> We've got inside 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. And Iowa, which has not led yet today. Do we have to pay royalties to uh, Sports Center anchors to use that line? They don't get the playoff. As well, wait a second, there's a flag fly. efficiently through the air but look at Michigan State in the time of possession nearly one quarter more yeah. than Iowa and that right there and but that right there the three turnovers have really hurt them virtually negates all that time of possession and every one of their uh, special team efforts for Michigan State has been an adventure especially when the balls come to them Tavian Banks the kid from Bettendorf Iowa but instead they give it to the up back burger Berger gets to about the six. Well, that's good running down there and good blocking again by Bill Reardon, 63, the center. You know, and, and he's a walk-on. He walked on at Iowa a few years ago. And why does it seem like all guys who walk on are really smart? I mean, this guy is a mechanical engineering major. Has gotten great grades here at Iowa from Chicago, Illinois. Walked on. He's 265 now. Done a great job for Iowa. It is third down. the deep back gets the ball got the first down inside the two right Reese made the touchdown saving tackle uh, they needed to pick it up and they went behind Reardon and Rochelle the left guard and they did a nice job of opening up a crease and Banks got in it watch again you'll see a good blocking again Reardon and Rochelle doing a good job, and Banks got more than he needed for the first down, and Iowa's really in business. And once again, Sorry Canoe, the free safety from Michigan State, played a big hit. Avian Banks is the deep back. But they give it to the up back Berger. And for the first time today,
Garnett. And that's what's going to do it. Garnett comes up. Grantwist is there. Good block. A lot of... Burgers in. After the touchdown, how will Michigan State respond? Hawkeyes. Michael Berger, primarily a blocking back, scores a touchdown. Backup tight end Chris Knipper scores two touchdowns. And the turnovers for Michigan State have killed them. And has kept Iowa in the game and given, in fact, the Hawkeyes the lead. Now, how will the Spartans respond with 12 minutes and 37 seconds left in the game? down at the 31 yard line. Michigan State still has 12 and a half minutes to go in this one, but next Saturday the Big Ten Conference Television Network will have Illinois visiting East Lansing at high noon Eastern 11 a.m. Central Time. But we have a lot of business to attend to between now and then. 12 minutes and 32 seconds. Michigan State trailing for the first time today. Cedric Irvin is the tailback in front of Garrett Gould, and they are both behind quarterback Bill Burke. Irvin gains about three. Matt Hughes, the linebacker, makes a tackle. It really is amazing that Michigan State is still able to pick up three or four yards running the ball. When you see all the guys that are in the box there for Iowa, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, once again, they are loading up against the run, but Michigan State is still able to pound out some yardage. Second and seven at the 34. Irvin and some more room. Irvin still on his feet. And Irvin finally brought down at the 49-yard line, a pickup of 16 yards for Cedric Irvin. He's a very sweet cutback runner. I mean, he really does a nice job of feeling his way, zone blocking. He's going to find the soft spot right there, cuts once, cuts twice to get back in the lane, almost runs over Fozell Adams, or at least into him, but he picks up the first down. And a neat block by the fullback, Garrett Gould. First and 10 at the 49. time into Iowa territory. Now make that Dwayne Goldberg. Dwayne Goldberg carries. Michigan State is still okay. running a trap play and still getting about four yards out of it. That time it was Matt Beard, number 52, who did the pulling and got in front of Goldberg. Just when you've seen enough of Irvin, in comes Dwayne Goldberg. And there's not any drop-off. No, not at all. They have done their job today. Michigan State. Now a little pitch out. And this time, nothing. John LaFleur, the right tackle, number 55, made the tackle. He's wearing the same number his father wore when his father played the exact same position at Iowa back in 1972. Uh, this time, Iowa does a good job of turning the play inside, and it was really Cook, number 15, who forced the play back inside where his teammates were there to help. Third down and about six at the 46 of Iowa. Colburn is the single setback. He's open and he drops the ball. Fourth down and five. A little bit too far for Nick Saban to think in terms of going for it at midfield and the way the Iowa offense is going. You don't want to give them the ball at midfield. He wants his defense to give him another stop, so he wants to pin down Iowa inside the 20 and see if he can get the ball back in good field position. Paul Edinger to punt it away. Demo Adams and Tim Dwight are standing back at their own 10-yard line. Let's see if they have any difficulties with the Sun Field. Good snap from center. White with the fair catch at the eight-yard line. 
That wasn't easy, was it? We'll be back. Iowa leads by seven. In Iowa City, Iowa, it's homecoming. 1996 for the Hawkeyes. And the home team is leading 37 to 30 with 10 minutes and two seconds to go. Iowa's got the ball first and 10 at their own eight yard line. Cedric Shaw is the tailback. Knipper in motion. Hand off to the up back. Aaron Brandquist. And in the last couple of series, the up backs have been getting some work. Well, Iowa's had trouble getting the ball outside because of the speed of the Michigan State defense, so they've tried to just slip one in on them underneath with the up back. And it has been working. And Iowa needs to have their running game going now so that they can run some time off the clock. Conversely, Michigan State needs to stop. They really have to keep Iowa down here so that their offense can get the ball back around midfield. Well, Iowa got more than what they wanted. They got six yards on first down. Shaw again, the tailback. Sherman calling six. Again, the up back. And look at Aaron Brantquist. Rumbling to the 40-yard line. 44-yard line, a pickup of about five. Demetrius Underwood made the tackle. Well, this is good for Iowa. It's the kind of drive that they want to have. They don't want to throw the ball if they don't have to. They want to keep the clock moving, and they want to get some points out of it. And right now, Hayden Fry, who's been through this a number of times, knows how to put away games in the Big Ten. He came in with 84 career Big Ten victories, Charlie than anybody else. He's in his 18th season here at the age of 67. Showing no signs of wear and tear. A little misdirection, and that is Cedric Shaw about a yard shy of a first down. Mike Austin, the outside linebacker from the weak side, made the tackle. Saban is really going to have to worry about whether they need to roll the dice here and be real aggressive here. It may be time to bring the blitz a little bit more. They need to stop Iowa, and they can't do it sitting back. Third and about a yard. Rodney Filer is now in the backfield along with Cedric Shaw. Filer is the up back. And everybody falls. And there are flags flying talk about the need to stop the run. Dead ball, upside, defense. And that gives Iowa an easy first down. Well, look at Michigan State loading up, Charlie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys within about four yards of the line of scrimmage. And that's getting ready for the running game. I mean, that's loading up there. They were too ready. have the ball and Nick Saban's squad has to dig in their heels or they can let this game get away from them in a real hurry. Right now that defense looks like they're on some of those uh, <laughs> those skateboards. They're running up a down escalator at the moment. Cedric Shaw spins man down to the 40 yard line. Flag flies. Looks like a late hit. Looks like Michigan State is becoming unglued. Well, this is what Nick Saban was concerned about. What would happen when his team had some adversity and the crowd got loud? Those are the things that would concern him. Dead ball, sportsmanlike conduct, defense. A little bit of frustration at the end of the play by Michigan State. 
You'll see Shaw do a nice job of making something out of nothing that's there. And it looks like Chris Smith at the end just kicked the ball away. Kicked the ball away. Chris Smith knows better than that. I mean, he is one of the guys that Nick Saban is counting on to provide some leadership for the team. And they need right now for the older guys to step up and get the younger guys to play with them and not worry about the crowd or the fact that they're having trouble right now. Meanwhile, the clock continues to run. And here's Shaw. Oh, he nearly broke it outside. But Amp Campbell, the left cornerback, made the tackle. Amp Campbell does a great job here. This is a guy who is actually stepping up. One of the inexperienced players. His first year as a starter. Missed last season and the year before injuries and redshirting. And now he has stepped up to make a big play, helping his team out. He's a guy who's been under a lot of pressure at Michigan State. They thought he would be the next Deion Sanders when he came in. And this is his first season of actually getting a lot of playing time. He's hurrying off the field now. Second and 12 at the 27. Tavian Banks is the deep back now. And Matt Sherman is going to call himself a timeout. That will leave Iowa with one. They lead by a score of 37 to 30. We've got five minutes and 42 seconds left. Michigan State pretty well needs to stop this drive now or call it a day. We'll be back to see how they do in just a moment. You expect 67 points at about 5.42 left to go. It looks like there's going to be more before it's all over. Michigan State has been able to do it on the ground, and Iowa has been able to capitalize on a bunch of mistakes by Michigan State. It is second and 12 at the 27-yard line. Banks is set back, and he's got the ball, and he gets to about the 25, back to the line of scrimmage. It was Chris Smith coming in from the backside. We talked about the need for the older guys to step up, and Chris Smith is now making amends for the bad play he made earlier, that unsportsmanlike uh, penalty he caused by kicking the ball away. That time he got in there and made a good play. That 15 yards has put Iowa into reasonable field goal position. Clock continues to run. From the shotgun on third and ten. Sherman better unload and he does in a hurry. Chris Kadipper was the closest receiver. But Austin and Underwood were all over Sherman. Uh, what a smart play by Sherman. And they had the blitz come in Michigan State. Here you see it. It's going to come from out there, and you're going to get it up here. They're coming with everything they have right now. They're bringing the blitz big time. Austin 25 on the outside. Sherman just throws it away. He didn't want to get his team taken out of field goal position. That's a very smart play. Brian Hurley, the long distance field goal kicker from 42 yards to give Iowa a 10-point lead. He made one from 51. This from 42. And Michigan State is still alive. The Spartans just won't go away. Well, you talk about dodging a bullet. I mean, Matt Sherman made a great play to give Iowa a chance to kick the field goal. And then Michigan State comes right back to block the kick to give them, keep their hopes alive. And it looks like it's Smith, 96. Again, the senior we talked about who needed to jump in and make a play, and Saban liked it. He's got his older players stepping up. Michigan State with 4.53 to go in the game. Goldberg to the 38, just a couple of yards. Kerry Cooks, a strong safety, made the tackle. Well, and the Michigan State passing game has just left with the wide receivers, Carter and Mason, that were injured and haven't been back in the ball game. And now Flozell Adams, their best offensive lineman, is down. Adams, a 325-pound junior from Bellwood, Illinois. Getting 
coming up very slowly. He's not only a big man, he's, he's a big player and a big time player. And it's hard to believe that this was a guy who got more enjoyment in high school out of playing in the marching band than on the football team. He would change uniforms at halftime to go out and play, but now he's totally focused on playing football and probably a career in the NFL after he's finished at Michigan State. He's the guy we told you earlier in the day who is deaf in his right ear and so he plays right tackle so that his good ear is closest to the quarterback. Irvin is now the setback on second and eight. Burke is in trouble. Burke will step out of bounds at the 35 and lose about a yard on the play. But it could have been a whole lot worse than that. Matt Hughes and Bill Ennis Inge were in on the play. Well, Saban really didn't want to have to go to, to that, but you're going to see blitzing up here. Actually, it's going to be on the right side. I'm sorry. Here it comes from the right side right there. And Burke does a good job of using his athletic ability to keep himself alive. And all the time he's looking downfield to try to make a play, he gets back near the line of scrimmage. Michigan State is 4 of 12 in third down situations today. And they've got a long distance to travel. Whistles are blowing. There's a flag on the field. Too much time, I believe. Dead ball. Delay of game. Offense. Oh, that's a killer. Yeah, that hurts because third and 14 is a lot tougher than third and nine. And look at those penalties. Michigan State has done more to hurt itself. They're down by seven. They've turned it over. They've committed penalties. The special teams have been an adventure. And yet they're still in it. Third and 14 at their own 32. Burke unloads. Irvin gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe gains a yard. So it is fourth down and about, oh, say 12 yards to go. Four minutes, eight seconds to go. Do they go for it? Well, it looks like about eight yards, and I don't think you go for it here because you've got, it, you've got your timeout. If you get a good kick and you can pin them down, your defense can give you one more stop, you've got a chance. But to try and go for it here without your best wide receivers is really asking a lot of people who don't normally make plays for you. And I think you have to kick it. And that is why Paul Ettinger is on the field and why Tim Dwight is standing back at his own 17-yard line. Saban elect to call a timeout with 3.53 to go in the game. And Charlie, a lot of that rushing on the ground for Iowa in the second half has been via that quick hitting, that fullback up play that they've run to pick up yardage. Grandquist has run it, and Fatburger has done it. That's right, Fatburger. 
Michael's mom and dad may not <laughs> like the nickname you've affixed to their son. Hey, it's sweet music. Fat Burger, you know? Good group. A lot of jazz. He's been playing sweet tunes today. Oh, that's a great way to dance out of it. <laughs> you think that's going to fly in the Burger household? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Burger, his name is Rodney Gilmore. G-I-L-M-O-R-E. Hey, he's got to carry the ball again here. He probably will. Well, and for Michigan State, it's pretty simple as to what they have to do. I mean, they have to commit seven, eight guys, nine if they need. There he to is. Make sure they can handle Mr. Fatburger. Give you a word of advice. <laughs> Cut your losses now. 37-30, Iowa. And that's Jared DeVries who's played a whale of a game defensively, as has number 99, John Ortley. play for the ball game. I mean, you're going to have about a third down and one and a half or so. You know Iowa's got to run the ball. Michigan State's going to have to dig in and bring eight, nine guys again to try and stop the running play, Charlie. So the Spartans now are down to one timeout. And Nick Saban calls his defensive unit over to the sidelines, every one of them. Pete Govins, number 92. Well, Nick Saban talked to us last night about how he tells his team to win one down at a time. That you win ball games that way. He said that was the way that they did it at Cleveland for the Cleveland Browns when he was the defensive coordinator there. And so he reminds his team all the time, win the down. That's all that matters. And if they win this down, they'll still have a shot to win the ball game. down and about a yard. The line of scrimmage appears to be the 22. Just shy of the 22. And they have to get to just shy of the 23. Well, and I think if you're Iowa, I think you give the ball to Berger. I think you keep Shaw or Banks in the backfield with you, and you go ahead and you run your fullback, and in this case, it would be Berger. You mean Mr. Berger? Mr. Berger. That's good. I've learned. <laughs> Third and one. They have to get to the 23. Mr. Berger does. Maybe on the second effort. No, I don't think so. I don't think he got it. to have a measurement, and so with the measurement comes the automatic stoppage of the clock. 3.39 to go. Hayden Fry, Nick Saban. Well, Ike Reese, number 44 for Michigan State, is confidently telling his teammates that they stopped him, that they stopped Berger. Yeah, they did. They did. for Hayden Fry what you do here. I mean, I you got to kick the ball. I don't think you can afford to take the gamble deep in your own territory that you can pick up a first down here. There goes Nick Gallery, the 240-pound punter onto the field. And now the special teams, which have caused all sorts of anxiety for Michigan State, will need to come up big. And they have two men back for the punt now. Gallery's kick is a beauty. Sending Mason back to his 20. Still on his feet and down at the 29. 54 yards by Nick Gallery. A huge kick. And Mason had some room, but Mason isn't healthy. And he wasn't able to do anything with the extra time he had with the ball. Nick Gallery, the leading punter in the Big Ten last year, also leading in the Big Ten this year. A 
comes up with a big punt at a very important moment of this game. So here is Michigan State. A field goal, of course, does them no good. They are 71 yards away from the end zone. And one timeout remaining. The redshirt freshman Burke. Ball is tipped down by John LaFleur. Right now, Michigan State is really trying to come up with something to do offensively. You see a good rush put on by Matt Hughes, 37. Michigan State wanted to run a screen pass. They can't. They are really struggling, Charlie, to find receivers. Mason is in the ball game, but he is so hobbled, he can't beat the man that's covering him. Second and 10 at the 29. The floor throwing over the middle, and that's complete. Octavius Long, but he gets only five yards on the play. Third down and five at about the 34. Well, Michigan State, if they keep their composure, they're okay. They need to pick up the first down, and Nick Saban is telling his guys, okay, let's run it, but stay calm. We have time. It's a two-down situation, third and four at the 35. First firing in the flat. That's complete, and that's Cedric Irvin to the 50-yard line. And a first down. And that's what this old cliche means, you know, when you talk about guys stepping up. Well, Irvin is stepping up. He's making plays now when other guys on the team are hurt and they can't make plays. He's only a freshman. He's playing like he's much more experienced than that. And he's helping his team out. From the 50, it's first down. First. Sideline, incomplete. Intended for Octavius Long. Right behind him. And he threw that one behind Long, and this is two plays ago. This is the ball that's thrown to Urban. It's just a little dump off here, and Urban does a nice job on his own of making the first guy miss and then picking up more yardage. They need to have guys like Urban make plays now because they can't really throw the ball down the field. Long and Mason are flanked to the top of the screen. Burke steps up in trouble. Down he goes. At the 47, the loss of three. Now that's inexperience there because he had time. He cannot take a sack because you have to waste the timeout now. The last timeout. Right. The thing to do would have been to throw the ball away. And he had time to do that. Today's Big Ten Conference game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated. Any use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this broadcast without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. Hey, there's a guy who was a pretty good quarterback, Chuck Long, when he was at Iowa. Now let's go back to Mike Gleason in the Big Ten Studios. Mike. Charlie, Evanston, it was 60-0 Michigan, but here's Brian Gowers, 16-14, 39 yards out. Northwestern, eight seconds to go, leads Michigan 17-16. Charlie? Wow. He has some games today in the Big Ten. We were talking yesterday to both Nick Saban and to uh, Hayden Fry about the parity in the Big Ten. And it's not just Ohio State and Penn State, and of course they've got a game going on here in just a little bit. I guess they're getting underway shortly. But at the next level, it's really almost wide open. Yeah, I'm not certain that the Big Ten is not the best football conference in America right now. I mean, they've got three teams in the top ten, and they've got a bunch of teams hovering around the top 25 that could be in there, Iowa, Michigan State, and Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Northwestern ain't bad either. Looks like Northwestern has pulled off the upset. Here, it's third and 13. Loads. Oh, and it's nearly caught by Gary Scott at the 20. It would have been.
been a miraculous catch. That time, Berg had to unload it before his man was open. Scott wasn't open yet, but he had to put the ball out there, and he almost came up with a great over-the-shoulder grab, and that's what Nick Saban needed. Oh, it's right there. He needed that play. Instead now, Michigan State could be down to the final play of the game. Fourth down and 14. Steps up, fires over the middle, complete to Josh Kerr, the tight end at the 27-yard line and a first down, a pickup of 19. Oh, that was big time. You talk about composure and a guy growing up in a hurry. I mean, Bill Burke stood back there, knew he had to have it, waited for his tight end cure to come over the middle, and he found him. First and 10 at the 27. Looking, throwing, incomplete. Intended for Gary Scott. Probably just as well as he didn't catch. Yeah, I was going to say that. That's a real good call there. They didn't need the pickup there. And this is the catch. Iowa in a two-deep zone. And Kira does a good job of coming over the middle in front of the safeties behind the linebackers to pick up the first down. Octavius Long is flanked way to the top of the screen. A couple of flankers at the bottom. Second and ten. Burke fires. Complete. To the 23-yard line. Clock continues to run. Well, they need to hurry up and get to the line of scrimmage, but the real problem is that it's third down for them now. They're okay with the clock as long as they hurry, but they've got to pick up a first down now. A minute and 20. Michigan State has no timeouts left. Burke out of the backfield. Sector Kirkman is caught. He breaks away, still on his feet, and down at the 20-yard line. Well, they've got to hurry. It's fourth down now. They couldn't stop the clock. They have no timeouts. They've got to get back to the line of scrimmage and run their play. And they must pick up the first down now or the ball game is over. It is fourth down and four. Burke is calling the play. Everybody's standing. For the end zone, intercepted. Damian Robinson is going to run it back. He's out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And there are 20 seconds left. And this game is now just about in the books. Uh, Michigan State was so rushed at the end there that they didn't have time to call a play that they wanted. And Burke was under pressure, and he just got rid of the ball. And now, here's the new Dodge play of the game, brought to you by the new Dodge. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. And the pick. Robinson, who stepped in, the ball was just thrown right to him. A gallant effort by Nick Saban's team today, but too many mistakes hit him in. And finally, the turnover in the heart. And Matt Sherman puts one knee to the ground and on the interception, Hayden Fry saw his team win its homecoming game and its Big Ten opener telling Robinson, sit down, sit down, there's no hurry. But now the game is over and Iowa comes from behind trailing 17 to nothing at one point to beat Michigan State 37 to 30. It's a heck of a ball game. Michigan State showed a lot of character hanging in there, and they almost got it done at the end there, Charlie. Their quarterback has grown up an awful lot today. And so that is going to do it for us. Iowa has beaten Michigan State 37 to 30. For Rodney Gilmore, Charlie Steiner saying goodbye from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. We hope you've enjoyed it.